Are you wondering how to add long fur to your needle felted animal? Or maybe you're unsure how to firmly attach the wool or even where to begin. You're in the right place. I will demonstrate how to add layers of wool to a miniature donkey. These techniques can be adapted for any long furred animal. Join me on my journey from preparation to finish starting with carefully needle brushed leg fibres then fluffy tummy and long textured back fur. You'll also see how we create a middle parting on the donkey's muzzle and add a long fluffy fringe and a beautiful flowing mane. Hi, I'm Amanda Adebisi of Fit To Be Loved and on this channel I'll teach you the techniques to create cute and realistic animals. If you would like to become a more confident felter and advance your skills, be sure to hit the red subscribe button below. In this video, you will learn where to start attaching fur to your animal, simple hand blending methods for natural textured colour tones, how to prepare wool lengths and a test or sample piece, which tools to use, specific skills for adding and layering shorter fur on animal legs, and finally the basics of the two attachment techniques. Here's the basic donkey. This is just core wool wrapped over a wire frame and felted medium firm. He doesn't look like a donkey at the moment very much, he just has his eyes, his nose and hoofs, but he will look a little bit like this one from the Fit To Be Loved website. We're going to start literally from the, um, the back legs, front legs, going under the tummy. And then we're going to start with the rump and we're going to go right the way through to the top. Um, then we'll work on the, the head, adding on the ears, the neck and then going down the back and then putting the tail on. The reason we do this is because um, what we don't want to happen is that we put all the long fibres on on the top and then we'll end up um, having to turn our donkey over to do the, the, the belly. And then what will happen is that we'd actually compress on these here um, and we want the top to really look really nice and not too matted and not too felted. So we start off with the pieces that aren't, I mean, they're important, but not as important um, of how you see it. And then we'll end up putting the fibres on here last, including the head and then the, the ears so that um, these are the bits you really see and we want to make sure that they're the right texture and not too matted or fluffed up. Um, so yeah, so we're going to be um, doing that and I will show you how. So before we start putting the fur onto the donkey here, I'm just going to show you my way. Um, it, it really doesn't matter how you do this, as long as you end up with kind of some fibres that I've, I've blended in to make kind of rough texture of, of fur. Now, I have kind of tried several ways. Um, I can show you a couple of techniques that I've seen people do and as well as the one that I feel happiest with. So here is the donkey looking rather bold without its fur. What I want to just let you know is not to underestimate the amount of wool that you're going to be needing. You're going to be using pieces for layer by layer by layer. So if this is your first time doing this particular animal and you're not sure how much you're going to use, the idea is that if you have a piece of wool that you can refer back to for consistency in colour, um, so that you're always being able to match up the colours later if you need to buy more wool. So for example, this piece of wool is, is the kind of test piece and I'll show you how we blend those now. So I'm just going to be showing you the wools that I'm going to be using to put the long fur onto the donkey. And as you can see, I have the Corridale wool in the medium brown. The rest of these are Merino wool, so a little bit softer. And 
and I've got a greyish tone, I've got a gingery brown tone, and then I've got this kind of um, creamy pinky off colour and a off white creamy colour. Now I've got them in different amounts because the donkey needs to be more of a browny grey colour with just these other colours kind of in there as well. If you're looking at a real donkey, you'll see if I just zoom in a little bit more that it's not just one monotone colour but it's lots of different flecks of textures and beautiful greys and browns. So I want to try and get this effect really. I don't want just one block of colour but lots of different colours mixed in. So this is my test piece and this is one that I can use to compare to make sure that I'm getting the right colours each time. But if I'm keeping these kind of amounts, so kind of twice as much in these colours, a little bit less and then maybe just a third in these colours, then each time I make an amount together it should be the right um, ratios of colours. So to blend my wools, what I want to do is I don't want to use something like a carding brush or sometimes people use dog brushes um, to mix the colours because what I find is that if you do that you actually end up with all of the fibres kind of getting quite matted or felted, they sometimes break and then you end up with a mixed colour but not the kind of variety that I'd like to um, achieve. Going back to the test piece you'll see that it's not just lots and lots of colours mix so much that you can't see the individual colours. You can see that there's a strand here of the kind of creamy colour, a strand of the brown here, a strand of the grey. Um, I probably will do this a little bit more but generally speaking you will just get a really nice textured look. So to mix the colours you don't want too much wool to be playing with because it's a little bit too um, difficult to do but if you get about this amount um, if I just stack my pieces on top of each other, like so. And then what you'll need to do is just grab the end quite firmly. And then if you pull from the other end. And then place back over the top. Pull from the one end. Place back over the top. Just keeping all the fibres going in one direction and carry on. You'll find that you'll mix the colours quite well. The other way you can do it is you can hold the top like this. I've seen people do this quite a lot and going back over again. And as you can see we're getting the, the colours mixed well through. You will speed up as you go. Um, and as you get used to it. It's quite a long and lengthy process but you'll find that you get really good results at the end. And actually I'm finding that this is quite a big pile so I'm just going to split this and put one to the side. The other thing you can do is kind of divide the colours and then carry on. If you, if you find a bit that's, you know, there's too much grey there, you want to divide like that. I try and keep them all the same way because what's going to happen later on is that you're going to, when you've got your donkey, you want them to all kind of be layered in, in long layers all the way along. Okay, so just carry on doing that. Okay, so I've carried on with um, the blending and I'm quite happy with these colours. I have been looking at my original donkey and so I'm able to kind of keep checking that I'm happy with those colours. Now at the beginning I did show you the quantities of how much I wanted. If at any point during just trying your test piece you would like to maybe change it up a little bit and have a bit of white maybe or a little bit of cream um, or change any of the colours slightly and um, what you can do at this point so I might then um, want to take just maybe a little bit of this colour for example um, and I want to add that to the mix so a little bit of a, a bit in the wall there and um, I might just 
let's add them on like this okay and then just put them back into the mix like we did before just keep pulling um, as so breaking up the white into it because you might find that there's different parts of the body as well which will have darker parts to have you know you might want to shade under um, the kind of shoulders or you might want to have a whiter area maybe under the belly that kind of thing so I'm just going to carry on mixing these as you can see I'm doing it in a variety of ways um, but all the time just really try and keep it all in the same way um, going the same way it's a bit boring having to do all this but it is well worth it at the end because you know that you've mixed all the colors that you like um, like so and then you can keep that then as your kind of your test piece um, at the side um, and then you can keep checking you know this is another one that I've made and I just I'm, I'm quite happy with that and then just make little piles okay um, once you've made some piles what you need to then do is you need to be able to work with a small amount to actually add it to the donkey so I'm just gonna do some dividing up here and you can carry on blending as you go um, so I've got my little piles going on and you'll find that I <laughs> I have literally just stacks of piles around my room um, when I'm preparing all of this so yeah so there we go this is just to make a start <laughs> to be using some barbed needles. I tend to use one at a time when I come to do the legs here just because they're a lot thinner and more or detailed. Um, I tend to use two when I'm doing a flat area but um, yeah so I'm going to use a 38 or 40 gauge star or triangle. I tend to mix it up kind of between the two um, and whatever I feel comfortable with and when I'm going on this area here I want to be careful of not getting it stuck in the wire um, so just be really careful because there's a wire underneath there so I'll use a tool like this when I want to use more than one needle it's a clover tool and it's, it's, it's really good to use and it's a lot safer for your fingers so I'll show you how to use these needles to simply um, attach the fur onto the back leg here starting from the back, moving on to the front and the belly and then I'll be showing you how to do the fur on the top. I'll also show you how to do a few features such as the, the muzzle, the ears and the tail. Now before I do, what wool colours do you think you will use for your animal? Let me know in the comments below. some wool now I'm kind of needing them to be quite a bit shorter for these bits um, I don't want it to be too shaggy um, and I think just because <clears throat> you know they, they can have haircuts but I think when they're going around the, the grass that it just tends to be a bit shorter and doesn't get caught um, in things as well so I am going to just make this a little bit shorter just for um, just for maybe by half and then so that it's not straight at one end, <laughs> this is what I tend to do, um, just so that it kind of keeps on the same kind of length, but not, uh, you know, the straight end kind of. Um, so I'm going to be starting off um, a little way up on the above the hoof here, holding the wool um, across. I'm going to take one of these needles, I'll be really careful. This might be easier actually if you do have a phone is to actually kind of position your donkey <laughs> over the edge like so. Okay, um, so that you're not going you know, into your fingers. So just hold that there and um, I'm going to make a little, just a little dint and a little twist in, in the centre. 
going to put that onto here. Now I'm going to go in all sorts of directions. What I want to do is actually make sure that the wool clasps directly into the leg. So I don't want to be able to just pull it off. I want to be able to um, make a central line dipping in almost like a little bow. Can you see the kind of bow shape um, there? And just in all sorts of directions going into that. Okay. And then folding down and then just going into it again. Okay. Now this is quite long um, and what I don't want is to be having lots and lots and lots of layers on the legs. I might do that more when I do the, the body. Um, but when I'm doing the legs, I can almost put it almost flat into into here. So I can give it a bit of a haircut afterwards, as you can see. I'm just going to change the angle up a little bit so you can see that. So that's just kind of going over the hoof at the moment. And I'm just going to, I don't know if you can see very well in the camera, this is actually, I'm starting, <laughs> I'm starting off with the actual trickiest bit of the donkey. It's a lot easier when I get to the body just because I can position it just lay it nicely and do it. <laughs> um, okay, so the main aim here is that I, as you can see, I'm just literally just forcing the needle in various directions. And look, that is not going to easily pull out. That is pretty still now. Okay, so I can just bring that around a little bit. It's like a little curtain, to be honest. Um, <laughs> going into the leg. If you can see this, okay. I'm just going to carry on fixing this in in a kind of movement like this. This is not how I do all of the um, long fur. This is just because this is slightly different for the leg. And I'll show you the technique a bit later on. Okay, so I'm just fixing that so that it's nicely on. And then the idea then is this is slightly longer because I'm doing this over the hoof and I will cut this in a bit. But then, then I'll just show you the next bit. So I, the idea is that you're going to go strands all the way around like this and then strands overlapping all the way around here and so on until you reach this bit. And then... Once you've done that all the way around on both these legs and the front legs, we'll be doing a similar thing, but we'll be working from the rump back that way. When you look at the animal, you need to kind of look at the way that the actual fur moves. So with some animals, um, you'll see that, you know, the rump will be maybe going this way um, and kind of shorter around here, slightly longer as it goes on top. Um, and then, you know, you might want to do some shading kind of here. So maybe um, take some of your kind of darker ones and, and do some darker bits here. Um, and there'll be markings as well that you need to look at. So look at real photos or look at pictures of, you know, um, the animals that you need to be doing um, and just get an idea of how it flows. Um, and just, you know... Um, It'll be a bit shorter here and a bit longer here. And when we, we will angle it this way. And then when we get to here, we're going to angle it kind of like that. Okay, so I'm just going to show you the next stage. So I'm going to take the next piece of uh, wool. I'm going to take a very small bit for this. And in fact, um, this is too long. So I'm going to um, just cut it. And again, I'm going to split it <laughs> um, like so. And then I'm going to show you just literally just overlapping. So you don't want it to be up here and leave gaps. You want it to actually just be overlapping slightly so that it's like real fur. OK, my donkey is in a very awkward position at the moment. Again, I'm going to be just pinching and twisting like almost like a little bow. Or putting that on to the donkey. 
and it's this is why it takes so long because it will look good <laughs> when you finish um, but just go down the middle in different angles like so drag the top over and again so just shallow um, felting you are not forcing sorry you can't see you're not forcing it all the way through to the other side you're literally doing kind of shallow felting in different angles and then that will really felt in and you really can't pull it <laughs> you could if you really yanked it out but once you've got all these layers on it's really hard to actually pull it out with all my animals I say don't really hardly you know brush them or try and pull the fibers which is why they're not toys they are seen as um, lovable collectibles um so there you go we've got um the next layer on there um just gonna do a little bit more just kind of blending in and you can also brush with the needle i know it sounds funny but you can kind of brush with the needle where you place where you want it to go so that it's almost um yeah it's blended in and i will just show you that um so we're getting some nice long fur on there okay so i'm going to carry on doing this all the way up and then i'll come back onto the camera okay okay i've just brought you back on camera because i've got kind of halfway through this leg and then i've thought of showing you just another little technique um i don't want this part of my um donkey's leg to be too thick in you know in width with the fur so rather than um doing my bow and then folding over um i'm taking little tiny pieces like so and then what i want to do is i just want to just felt this top piece into it so if i just show you again i'm laying it over like i would before but rather than bringing over say the top half like so I'm just going to do this only the top bit so I'm going to place my needle into the middle bit in different angles like before but rather than placing it over now I'm just going to take the wool twist it a little bit and just blend it in okay it's only a tiny bit anyway so it's not going to be sticking out or anything it's just going to be enough to keep it in place and I think what actually helps with this way is just to go back on it from the other side there we go and then I'm just going to you see it's not so thick it just makes it the same kind of technique but it's not so thick so that when I now brush it up it's a lot thinner as you can see so you know I'm I'm making this a little bit thicker but this a bit thinner okay and then I'm just going to carry on and I'm going to do that in this area where I don't want it to be too thick okay so here I've got as far as doing the donkey's fur on the back leg. I have trimmed around very carefully um, to give it more shape. I'm going to be carrying on now off camera just to do the other legs in exactly the same way. So I've done my four legs here. I've left this last leg just to show you how I'm going to trim it up. So the other one, if we just um, show you them both together it's nice and neat very tight across the leg right um, very flat almost I've not done it like I might do with the, the fur on the back which I'll show you in a, in a while I actually wanted it to be very close um, to the skin and just all in one direction so I've felted into the shape um, I've also trimmed around the edges so I'm just going to show you that now on this leg so I'm going to take the nail scissors. You don't need to use any particular kind of scissors or you might be, I don't know, you might be um, happier with hairdressing ones. It's up to you. I find these are really tiny so it's really 
useful to have with, with small subjects like this little donkey. So the way I, I don't want to make this too straight, I just want to snip away and kind of away from myself, kind of in this kind of action. So as you can see there, I just, it doesn't matter too much how you do it. Um, and then I'm going to felt around it in a little bit as well. I've also, this still sticks out quite a bit and I want the shape of the leg to be really showing. Um, so I had a bend here and you can't see that so easily. So I'm just going to take some of these um, ends and again just cutting away at an angle means that you won't get it too jagged um, but also not too um, too straight either. Some animals, this animal may have a haircut by its owners like dogs um, and other kind of animals that people keep but some of the animals that you'll see that I've done are like the fox or the rabbit they won't actually have a haircut they might have a seasonal molt <laughs> but the idea is to not make it look like it's just come out of the hairdressers but make it quite natural kind of blending in so I'm just going to carry on doing a little bit of this around the edges And then what I'm also going to do is use my needle and just find the kind of shape, general shape, and then kind of felt in towards the general shape. And because the furs are going this way, what I want to do is do it in that kind of direction. I don't want to be matting this, I just want to keep it into place. I don't want it to be taking away from the fact that there's still loose fibres there. So again, finding the shape that I want here. And just kind of going into the shape there, as you can see. And then the ends, just kind of blending in. I want to show a bit of the hoof here. I don't want it to be... You can see this on this one, I want to show a nice bit of the hoof. So this might take you a little while just to do the finishing. But it's all good fun and it's kind of what makes the overall look of the animal once you've finished. So I'm just going to trim that a little bit more. I don't think I want it that thick. Okay. So yeah, I would just carry on kind of shaping that. As I showed earlier, you can kind of brush the fibres so that you don't show little holes and you don't show where you've kind of gone and stabbed in. You can do a nice kind of smooth kind of brushing just to make it really look lovely. And there we go. Mm -hmm.